Hi, this is Gene Bosler. I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm revisiting a construction site that we looked at a couple of months ago. I'll try to link that to you, uh, earlier YouTube video. It's actually two sets. Let's see how they did. Um, a little while ago, uh, when I was first here, of course, a couple of months back, this protective fence was still standing. This curb, this curb was part of the plans on the drawings, and I haven't seen them, but I know for a fact that these curbs make it onto the drawings. Although the protective fence extended farther out here previously. And so the drawings, here's something I want to point out about construction. This is the line on paper. This out here is where the cutting actually happens. So there was, not only was the cutting farther back in, but it wasn't done anywhere remotely properly. So what I want to point out is that, you know, on paper this is where the roots are being cut. In reality they're being cut farther in. And I also want to point out that protective fencing doesn't last very long. These specs uh, sound like they have a lot of teeth, but it's been a long time since anybody's inspected here. Plus, this has all been regraded, and all that damage we saw before looks all nice and smooth. There is no telling the extent to which this tree has been beat up. And I mean, not just the above ground portion of it. I'm speaking primarily of the below ground portion of it. Okay. So, when I was here, we looked at a couple of other trees. Let's go look at them too. Construction fence never stays erect for long. This orange stuff is really just a, a joke, uh, not a very funny one at that. This six foot chain link fence that you can rent in whatever eight foot sections and you can link them together, that stuff is much better. You know, this protective fence is, as you can see, it is devolved into a you know scene from from a Halloween haunted forest or a, I, I want to further point out I, I, I think the video previous video will show this protective fence is not really accounting for these this hardscape here so I mean, what kind of a joke of a protection zone is that to begin with? Let's just say that protective fence still was intact. As a percentage of the surface area of what should be the root protection zone, which should be the entire drip line, that's a really nice specimen. It was a nice enough specimen that somebody, you know, featured it in their design. You can see that it's a feature here. Nice hardscape, donors' names, the memorial tree. They were they were conscientious enough to acknowledge at some point that this tree was special, right? I mean, if you stand back and and look at it, vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the place, they built this nice little thing around it. Wasn't that sweet? What measures were taken to reduce impact, particularly to the root system? But also to the above ground portion of the tree.
It only takes one pass over a root zone to compact the soil. Again, the trees of least value have the, the best protective fence of all. And I, I overstep my bounds by saying least value. Who am I to assign value to a tree? I'm not the owner. Nor am I a potential buyer. Value is a subjective concept. And only the owner knows the value. Or the person willing to pay a price. So, the trees that would largely be considered as a lower quality tree and less worth preserving might be a better way of saying it. I like hackberries, don't get me wrong. People just don't generally invest a lot of money in preserving them during a construction project. Uh, because they tend not to have a whole lot of longevity and they tend to have a lot of pieces break out of them and they tend to fall over in storms and they tend to be structurally weak and less safe than trees like live oak. Here's a nice big old live oak. Let's talk about it. Another nice specimen. I would like to ignore for just a moment the way the lower portion of the crown has been completely gutted out. It's not uncommon for a live oak not to have a whole lot of live foliage in that portion of its crown anyway, although it looks to me like it's had some help. I don't want to judge the crown too harshly because they are in their molt right now. And if I can focus in and show you what I mean, this is March, today's St. Patrick's Day, and this live oak is definitely wearing its green, see? All that newly emerging foliage. So the old foliage hasn't fallen off yet. The new foliage is emerging. Uh, oh, wow. Whew. Look at this. They were a pretty good distance from the root system of this tree, but this is a very good picture of a live oak's root system in most settings. Look at this. Big old wide open trench. Those roots aren't very deep now, are they? These roots are no more than about 12 inches below grade. And boy, did they cut some doozies here. Never mind that they're 25 feet out from the trunk. There's some serious root cutting here. This is a significant percentage of this tree's root system. Okay, so its capacity to provide the essential nutrients for the photosynthesis process to happen is severely reduced. And if I'm seeing two inch diameter roots out here 40 feet away from the trunk at the drip line now you begin to see that this root system extends far far beyond the drip line here I am 20 feet beyond the drip line looking at roots and here I could be dealing with roots from this other tree but again here I am equidistant between these two trees that are about 100 feet apart looking at these roots these are significant roots So what measures were taken during the tree preservation phase? To stimulate fibrous feeder root growth in advance of the construction project, we knew darn well, uh, well ahead of time that we were going to be cutting this trench. What did we do in preparation for it to help uh, reduce the loss here? What did we do to make sure these roots were properly pruned so that they weren't jagged, stripped, and torn up, split, rendered virtually impossible to callus over uh, with, the, with the significantly increased risk of, of uh, root rotting pathogens attacking the root systems. W what measures were taken to be systematic about the root severance rather than, okay, we got a trencher, we're coming in. Okay, why couldn't they have gone under? 
why couldn't they have used an air spade for the first, you know, all of this? Look at all, the, all this entire depth. There's no reason why an air spade could not have been employed, employed in the entire depth of this. It's not like they were using a rock saw to cut through limestone, which is what we would be seeing if we were someplace like San Antonio or Austin. This trench impacted the root systems of one, two, three, four, five, six live oaks. I'm not saying the trench didn't need to happen. I'm saying one must ask, did the trench need to happen in this fashion? And knowing that the trench was coming in, what could have been done uh, to mitigate or prevent, minimize the damage? Here's a nice live oak. Now, I don't know if it's always lean this way. Probably. There's another hell of a specimen off over here. Look at this guy. There is no construction fence left. And I think this is a low spot that drains poorly too. Consequently, it would be in, uh, it would be, um, in the tree's best interest to factor in some improvement in the drainage. They are going to come in and improve the drainage here. But do we know if that's a retrofit or if that's part of the original plan? Because usually once something's been hardscaped like this, let's just say hypothetically we're 75% of the way through with this project. We've discovered now the best laid plans of mice and men. We have a low spot that doesn't drain well and the water sits. Now they're going to have to come in and do some sort of do some sort of drainage ditch or pipe or something to deal with this. How's that going to impact the tree? Well, it's not part of the original plan. So here we have a really nice live oak here and a really, really super duper, super nice live oak right here. And all this brand new and newly installed hardscape is, is showing us that there's a, a water retention problem here. And, uh, you know, how is that going to impact this? This live oak here is barely alive. Look at this one's crown and compare it to this one. This one, again, I don't want to judge too harshly because of the time of year. Account for the the trees being in molt. This is putting on some new foliage, but consider just how close to the tree this, tr this curb was put in. And you remember, the cut was actually made here, not here. So we're talking about a pretty significant structural compromise, not to mention severance of a significant portion of the tree's root system. How smart was that? I'm, I'm not going to look at all the damage up, up aloft, but I do want to show you the tree, especially as it looks next to the other ones. It's pretty, it's pretty scary. So my question would be what, what measures have been taken post, post construction to, to uh, see if we can keep these things going. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Gene Bosler. Leave your comments or questions at uh, either email them to info at wideworldoftrees.com or just leave a comment in the comments section. Thank you very kindly.